Hey there, Bernie Borges here, CMO of Ingresso and host of the Social Business Engine podcast. I'm here on location with Brian Kornfeld. We are at Florida Funders, home of Synapse Florida. So Brian, welcome to the Social Business Engine podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Bernie. Really excited to be here. And today we're doing a video version, so that's fantastic. <laughs> Brian, let's begin with an introduction to Synapse. Uh, what is Synapse? Synapse is a community. Um, when you look at innovation and entrepreneurship in this area, uh, there's a lot of people who are trying to go one way, a lot of people are trying to go another way. And uh, if you look from the outside, the Tampa Bay area, innovation and entrepreneurship, this isn't seen as one of the best areas, and it really should be. We have so many awesome things that are going on in this area with so many great raw ingredients, and we're trying to organize and we're trying to connect the whole ecosystem so everybody's working in one direction. We're not trying to replace anybody. We're not trying to kick anybody out. We're not trying to be our own incubator. Uh, we're trying to make the connections happen in a meaningful way. And by allowing those meaningful connections to take place and really giving that community feel, we believe the whole area, the whole ecosystem is going to benefit. Okay. Now, I'm a member of the Tampa Bay Business Community and I've been here for over 20 years, moved here from California. And uh, what I've observed over the past 25 years is that this area really has been growing and thriving. So what uh, I see Synapse doing is in fact accelerating the community aspect of the local business community. Now you have both a technology element to Synapse and, and kind of the physical community building. So why don't you elaborate on both of those? So Synapse really builds itself on three different platforms as we call it. Uh, the first is uh, publishing. Uh, we took this great old technology called the printing press and uh, we made it innovative, uh, putting out coffee table books on innovation and all the really cool stuff that's going on in the area. 350 pages of awesome things and companies that most people have never heard about that could be going on right down the street from you that really calls to light and starts to spread the good news of some cool things that are happening. The second is a web app or a web platform that we are, we've built, we've launched, is uh, out in the world in its beta form where people can go online, people can make curated connections, people can challenge themselves, people can read the good news, they can educate themselves, and they can get in some great meaningful discussions with uh, local like-minded entrepreneurs or like-minded people within the ecosystem. This isn't just for entrepreneurs, we actually look across eight personas and uh, all the personas really play together towards building a really solid ecosystem. The last and the third way is events and purpose-driven events, events that really mean something, events where people can get things done. Uh, we just put on the Synapse Innovation Summit March 28th and 29th at Amelie Arena. We had 3,250 people under one roof hearing about what the future of Tampa Bay is going to be, hearing about the future of mobility from CEO of Hyperloop and the G uh, Southeast Regional GM of Uber, hearing about culinary innovation and innovation through different sectors and artificial intelligence from Bernie Meyerson, the CIO of IBM, the future of Jeff Finnick's uh, innovation hub with Lakshmi Shinoy. Uh, there's so many really amazing things and to enable everyone to get under one roof and start having those conversations and walk around the arena see 257 tables of early stage tech exhibiting so really then getting to that hands-on experience of all the awesome things that happen um, it was a sight to be seen and so many I've heard so many great stories out of it people getting business I actually got a story today of somebody getting her dream job just because from that event she met somebody who then she started talking to at that event she actually lives in New York now and she's gonna move down to Tampa because she wow. got this job I saw that she posted on Facebook just this morning and I've been talking to her all day since because I'm so happy for her that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Brian, as I mentioned, uh, I came here from California 25 years ago. So as a, as a member of the local Tampa, Tampa Bay business community, I've seen it evolve quite a bit. It really seems kind of ripe. It seems like the timing is right. So what do you think, what is it about the local Tampa Bay business community right now that really makes it the right timing for Synapse to really build and accelerate this ecosystem? And I actually came from California. Well, I grew up in the Tampa Bay area, but I lived in LA for a number of years and I moved back here nine years ago now. Um, and I've seen a huge transition just over these nine years. And what really does make it ripe? When we go around, we were doing a lot of our research on Synapse and trying to figure out what the true problems are in the area. Uh, a lot of people were saying the same three things, that there's no money, that there's no talent, and there's no customers. And what we actually discovered is none of those statements are correct. 
uh, the really the true problems uh, have other relationships. And so the no money issue, if you drive on Bayshore, if you drive in Snell Island, St. Petersburg, or over by Clearwater Beach, go on Harbor Island, there's a lot of money here. A lot of the money is in uh, corporations. A lot of the money is in real estate developers. It's about enabling those to really start to get involved and to ease that transition so people who have sold companies or who have sold commercial real estate for 20 years and have made millions and millions of dollars start to put it into tech because they start to see where those return on investment well, might be. Well, let me be. Give, give a quick shout out to Tech Data is a public corporation, the largest corporate, uh, public corporation in Tampa Bay. I don't know what their headcount is. It's, it's in the thousands. They're global. Yep. And then there's a local software company, ConnectWise, founded here 35 years ago by mm -hmm. Arnie Bellini. And there are 1,000 employees today. I think they're over $100 million in annual revenues. And so those are just two examples of technology companies that are homegrown right here in Tampa Bay. Uh, and those are our unicorns. Those are in tech data, actually. Right before our event, it came out that they are the biggest company in the state of Florida. Uh, the largest grossing revenue that's a Florida-based company. So that's a big deal. They took over from Publix. And um, it's not just about those companies. It's the other companies really getting involved as well. So the Publix of the world, Publix actually sent a couple of people. So Publix, for those that don't know, is a grocery chain that's, yes. that's in the southeast mm -hmm. with a very strong presence right here in Florida. Uh, they're a big, big, big grocery chain here. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, think Ralph's or Vaughn's right. uh, or around the world Trader Joe's. Uh, they uh, they sent representatives to this event because they want to be more innovative and they want to be ahead of the game on what people are shopping for. They were one of the first ones to actually uh, buy into Shipt, um, which was a company that does at-home grocery delivery that recently was acquired. Um, other com uh, one of our local biggest attorneys here, John Morgan, who is a uh, personal injury attorney, and he has his ads all over the place. I mean, it, anybody who comes around here, you can't get away from Morgan & Morgan. Yeah. He's now investing in technology. I have a friend who uh, raised $2 million from him and um, other funds uh, that he's surrounded with. So there's a lot of people who are starting to come in here and really start to pump the money. And um, Jeff Vinnick also came in from out of town, uh, managed hedge funds, bought the Tampa Bay Lightning, putting money into real estate, and then by putting money into real estate, he realized by putting money into the early stage tech, he's gonna build these companies up to take over his uh, real estate investments, and they're the ones who are gonna really be his tenants going forward, but you gotta get them on the ground floor, otherwise they're not gonna flourish. Right, right. So Brian, I wanna come back to the platform, because yep. we started there and then we got off that topic a little bit. Um, it's synapsefl.com. Correct. That's the website. Yep. Okay. And is it modeled after anything? Is there anything else out there like that? So we looked at a number of different web platforms that were already out. Um, we looked at Gust, we looked at AngelList, we looked at a number of different platforms that are used uh, out all the way to Tel Aviv and um, Silicon Valley, Park City Angels. Uh, nothing does everything that we're trying to do here. So a lot of these platforms will try to connect two or three personas within the ecosystem. They'll try to connect an entrepreneur to an investor or a job, a job board like AngelList. What we're trying to do is connect what we think to be the eight e personas that really make an ecosystem thrive. So if you think uh, across the entrepreneurial or the innovation ecosystem, there's entrepreneurs, there's investors, there's large scale corporations, there's job seekers and talent, uh, there's service providers, there's government, educational institutions, and the entrepreneurial service organizations like the accelerators and the incubators. And all of them play a very distinct role. And a lot of our research showed us what the different roles are and how they connect with each other. A lot of this came from an Ernst and Young article called The Power of Five, where they talked about five of the personas, and we really thought you need to have the eight that come together. Mm. So that's how we started to think about the platform and how we can model it. And what we did is we thought what could be the easiest user experience and what is very simple that people can just pick up and start using. And the examples that came to mind for us were Netflix and Apple TV. They're so simple, they're boxes, they're, they give you what it is that you're looking for. So Netflix, if I were to go to my Netflix account, it knows I like a comedy, it knows I like action movies, it knows, probably knows I grew up watching Die Hard and Top Gun. Um, it knows I don't like scary movies though, so it's not gonna show them to me, but if I wanna find them, it can be there. So we think of it as a way to connect with other people through the ecosystem um, in a very curated way, trying to find what you're looking for when you would need it rather than being overwhelmed with a filtering set that you can set up for yourself 
and it scrolls across in the same way like a Netflix does, where it'll show you the boxes that you could scroll across and pick to make your connections. So is the idea then, Brian, that as a member of the local business community that I can network there and grow my business, but then also attract people from outside of the area and, and kind of attract them to either relocate to Florida or look to do business in Florida? Oh, oh absolutely. And Florida is one of the most business-friendly states uh, in the country. And it is one of the fastest growing states in the country as well. And so by enabling these connections to happen. What we're doing is we're giving people a logical first step in the process. And people, that's one of the things that scares people is when they start somewhere new and when there's change, they don't know where to take that first step. And if we give people a first step that they can take and a place where they can go, uh, like in Chicago, if I were to move to Chicago with, in the startup world, I would walk into 1871 and I would just start talking to people and asking questions. And it might not be the answer I want, but they'll connect me to the next person and the next person and the next person. We don't have a place like that right now here where you can physically go, but we do have an online platform and it makes it easy. And that also solves one of our bigger problems, which is the geographical problem of Tampa Bay. We're a huge distance, if you think going from North Pasco to South Sarasota, away from each other. But if I'm sitting out by USF, and I need a software developer, a software design, and some of the best software design is done at Ringling College in Sarasota, or if I need to find somebody, a blockchain attorney who's in downtown Tampa, I might not bump into them on a day-to-day -day basis. Having a platform like this, it solves that problem. It really cuts out the distance because the distance is all virtual and it's mm -hmm. right at your fingertips 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week. Yeah, a digital transformation in action. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, so last topic. Um, let's come back to the, uh, the Synapse Innovation Summit uh, in March of this year. It was the second occurrence of it, correct? It was the second occurrence. It was the first of this kind. Uh, the 2017 was, um, it was a really interesting event. It was actually three events in one. Uh, there was a morning session with workshops, uh, invite only, where people really started to put some focus this on- 2017? Yes, okay. um, put some focus on what the ecosystem can look like. There was a Florida funder sponsored lunch for investor pitches. And then the afternoon was the real, the ticket people could buy. 600 people at the Marriott sold out for about five hours of main stage talks between Jeff Finnick and the mayors and Mindy Grossman from Home Shopping Network, uh, a number of, great people within the area, but it just, it really started to build that momentum into what we could do then for 2018, which just blew the roof off. Yeah, well, yeah. over 3,000 people in uh, tw 2018, I had the, uh, the the honor of presenting myself on, on how to use LinkedIn to build your sales pipeline, had a great turnout. Everywhere I went, every session was filled, standing room only. Uh, the vibe, the energy was really outstanding. So. How, were you guys satisfied with 2018? So the 2018 goals for me, if people were to think about, you know, what's the one thing you were trying to accomplish? What's the one thing you really wanted to do out of this event? Um, some will say, oh, were you trying to make money? Were you trying to get a bunch of people there? For me, it was moving the needle of innovation in Tampa Bay. It was the economy, the ecosystem. Are we really starting to push it in that right direction? Did we make a dent in the universe? And it's an astounding yes. Like we, what happened? That energy under that roof. The buzz. The buzz was it's uh, what people awesome. were saying, what people were feeling in there. Yeah. The excitement. It, it was. Uh, it's hard to describe. Um, I just. I honestly can't wait for 2019 and to see what comes so from what, it. So what, what's in store for 2019? Uh, we're planning it already. Uh, we're already thinking about it. Um, whether we're back at Amelie Arena, whether we go somewhere else, the way it's going to work. I just know it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. The speakers are were top notch. You included. I've heard some amazing feedback from your talk, um, but we're going to set the bar even higher. And um, I'm really excited to see what happens. Fantastic. So, Brian, what do you see for Synapse over the next three to five years? So, I see a number of things for Synapse over the next three to five years. One is I really see that community feel. Uh, I see people knowing that there's that central place, there's that first step for people to go to, that people can be a part of something here, and it's really gonna help to boom and grow the whole area, the whole Tampa Bay region, because everybody's working in the same direction, whether you're Tampa, St. Petersburg, who cares if you have to drive over a bridge, like let's all work in, in, as a team and make Tampa Bay one of the best ecosystems uh, in the country. Uh, I see an engagement of what we like to call the other 90%. There's a group of people who are gonna show up at every event, no matter what. Uh, you're always gonna see those same people. 
It's about the other people, the people who don't know about the events, the people who don't get that good news yet, the people who don't know what they can do um, and what's out there and giving them that opportunity to get out there. I see Synapse as a host and a host platform for corporate innovation challenges. Um, it's something that also came out of our research as we were f figuring out what Synapse is going to be and what it should be, is uh, in certain ecosystems, uh, Cincinnati in particular, uh, they were kind of a struggling town. Uh, Procter & Gamble, Macy's, two of the biggest corporations there in the consumer retail space, uh, they were plus minus and they were not innovating at the lowest levels. And so they started doing these, what they call the innovation challenge, where they'll pump prize money out into the world and they'll say for 10,000, 15, $20,000, solve our biggest problem. And people started doing it. They started getting engaged. It started putting more money into the ecosystem. It built an acquisition pipeline. They started building their own uh, incubators and accelerators and they started crowdsourcing innovation and it gave them better results in a faster way for less money than if they were doing it other ways. One of the biggest issues we see here locally is the local corporations, are they don't get as involved as they could. Some of them are, ConnectWise is doing a great job, TechData is doing a great job, um, but and SOCOM does a great job. Uh, one of the biggest, what we can call a corporation in the world, the Special Operations Command, which is home at MacDill Air Force Base, mm -hmm. But others are taking a step back. Um, there's one large Fortune 500 company here that um, their tech hub is here in the Tampa Bay area, and I won't call them out on this, but their incubators are in New York and Tel Aviv. Um, there's no reason they shouldn't be pu putting more money into the ecosystem here and leveraging the local technology and all the great stuff happening up at USF Engineering. So if we can really start to build a lot of momentum around these challenges, it sets this whole region apart. It puts us right on that pathway to no longer being an up and coming city when pe we are in the list. And sometimes we're not even in the list of up and coming cities. We're a city that's there. We are listed among the San Francisco's, Silicon Valley's, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. There's no reason we shouldn't be with all of the raw materials that we have here. There's no reason we shouldn't be with the talent that we have here with the laws that we have here and the government involvement, with this being such a business-friendly state and business-friendly region, with our weather, I mean, come on, it's people- Don't it's, forget there's no state income tax. And that no state income tax is amazing. Yeah. Uh, at that 8% really took a dent in uh, living out in California. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, other, what other city has weather like this uh, all the time? I mean, maybe San Diego, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful out right now. It was snowing up a, a week or two ago in Boston and New York, and down here, people are going to the beach. Yeah. It, how do you argue with that? Yeah. Late January, the Gasparilla Parade, which is a 300,000 person attended parade of pirates invading Tampa. It's one of the biggest parties of the year. Late January, outdoors, and people are going there in short sleeves and shorts every year. You cannot argue with that. It's, it's just such a sight to see, and um, I love this city. I love this region. And um, I highly recommend it for anybody who's yeah. thinking about relocating Again, businesses. Again, my family and I came here 25 years ago and, and we love it as well. We've raised both our kids here. They went to college here in the state of Florida and uh, they're, both, uh, they're both doing very well. So um, let's do this. Let's, let's bring it to a wrap. Uh, Brian, um, where can people learn more about Synapse and also connect with you if they want to connect with you to learn more about what you've got going on? Absolutely. Uh, like uh, Bernie had said earlier, go to synapsefl.com. Um, if you go to synapsefl.com, follow the link to join the community, join the platform. You'll find me on there. You can search for me on there. Uh, click on my, the little box for Brian Kornfeld. Hit connect. Send me a message. Uh, I'll make sure to send something back to you. And um, please, please, please join this community because everybody here who joins it, it just makes it more and more valuable to every single user and uh, it's just gonna make it better and better and better as time goes on. And it's really gonna take Tampa Bay and put us in that top tier of uh, innovation ecosystems in the world. Thank you, Brian. And of course, this podcast is a global audience, so no matter where you are, if you wanna do business in Florida, make sure that you visit uh, synapsefl.com and join the community. Well, Brian, thank you so much for joining me here today on the Social Business Engine video podcast on this episode. Thank you very much for having me, Bernie. Appreciate it.